As of late, I have noticed a very high amount of hate for the 1999 film The Matrix. Frankly, this is not acceptable as, objectively, the 1999 film The Matrix is the best film ever made in the entire history of filmmaking. It is the Citizen Kane of movies and action filmmaking, and if you are one of the haters, then you are absolutely incorrect. Let me change your mind. Before I start with my defense of The Matrix, I want to quickly look at what I call the three critical errors of filmmaking that make a film objectively bad. And to do this, I'm going to discuss an objectively bad film, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Firstly, the biggest thing a film can do to be bad is be boring. This is one of the pivotal traps that 2001 falls into, as I cannot really tell you what happens in that movie besides the section with Hal. Actually, hold on. I can tell you that the film shows us a bunch of monkeys for about 20 minutes, which, in fact, is extremely boring. The least they could have done is given the monkeys names, because that's how an audience really bonds to characters. A second critical error in filmmaking that 2001 makes is actually presented best in the previously mentioned HAL sequence, and that's making the characters boring. In 2001, everybody acts like a robot, with no personality, speaking with no character or emotion. You know it's bad when the robot in your film has more character and personality than the actual human characters. Even during the part where Dave decommissions Hal, he doesn't even say anything cool like, Sorry Hal, but it was either you or me. Or, It was nice knowing you Hal, but your time has come. Instead, Dave asks Hal to sing to him, which is a baffling choice when Stanley Kubrick could have actually done something cool. A third and final error that I'm going to speak about before going into my defense of the Matrix that 2001 makes is being pretentious. For example, the Stargate sequence of 2001 is absolutely unwatchable. I'm not quite sure what my man Stanley was trying to do with this sequence, but it comes off as a pretentious attempt to show what Dave is experiencing in that moment. Another issue I have with this sequence is that I could accomplish the same thing in Adobe After Effects, so I don't quite know why this scene is so widely acclaimed across the film industry. So in the end, 2001 is like the Death Stranding of film. Pretentious, boring, and way too long. Now finally, I shall take these three critical errors and discuss why the 1999 film The Matrix not only doesn't fall into these traps, but also excels in the three critical spots where 2001 A Space Odyssey fails. Going back to the first spot where 2001 A Space Odyssey fails, being boring. The 1999 film, The Matrix, truly excites. Let me ask you, the viewer, when you watched The Matrix last, were you ever bored? If you were, then let me tell you. I don't think you were really experiencing the movie properly. Maybe you were watching it on your phone, but at that point, you would be at fault for not watching the film in an appropriate location. Getting back on track though, this movie really excels in the art of not being boring which is something that is actually very difficult. Every little nook and cranny of The Matrix is filled to the brim with utter excitement and mystery that it takes the viewer on almost a roller coaster of a ride as the film progresses. One example of this is the part of the movie where the cat walks past Keanu Reeves' character, Neo, twice in the same way. In a less than adequate film, this would be brushed off as just a continuity error, but The Matrix dives headfirst into this making it a pivotal part of the film that establishes another rule of the universe. I'd also like to briefly talk about the final shot of the film, where Neo flies towards the camera and off screen. This is just such a cool thing to have the main character do at the end of the film, and it also brings Neo's character development to its natural conclusion after becoming the one. Now, onto the second critical part of good filmmaking good characters. Where 2001 falters with totally uninteresting characters such as Dave, Hal, and the Monkeys, the 1999 film The Matrix excels. Instantly recognizable characters such as Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus really help to invest the viewer into the film. Let's look at Neo first. He's a cool hacker man living in the late 90s trying to figure out what The Matrix is. This helps the viewer connect with the film as 
the mystery of the Matrix is slowly revealed to the viewer at the same time as the main character. Now, on to the character of Trinity. Although she mainly serves as the person that falls in love with Neo, she's also a badass who knows how to navigate the Matrix like no one else. One of the complaints that I see lodged at this film consistently is that there's no development of her and Neo's relationship before she decides that she loves him. This is objectively wrong, as literally anyone with taste would fall in love with a man that can stop bullets by simply raising his hand and is able to fight Agent Smith with one hand behind his back. Now, on to the final character I'll be discussing, Morpheus. Morpheus is such a cool character as he's the one that reveals the mystery of the Matrix to Neo and the audience. Through this, there is a sense of comfort when Neo and the audience finally leave the Matrix, where the audience learns to trust Morpheus as he obviously knows what he's talking about. Later in the film, when Morpheus is taken hostage by the agents, because of this previous relationship that the audience has with Morpheus, the stakes are instantly raised as the audience no longer has the comfort of Morpheus around. Finally, onto the last critical part of good filmmaking, not being pretentious. The Matrix is the absolute least pretentious film I have ever seen. Metaphors? Absolutely not. The Matrix doesn't expect the viewer to really think about the film, and that's what makes it so good. For example, does it really make sense that our whole reality is actually a computer simulation? Absolutely not, and The Matrix knows this which is why the film doesn't attempt to explain it in the slightest. All that is needed to leave the Matrix is to take a red pill. By not lingering on this idea, the Matrix is able to show us a bunch of cool stuff, like Neo and Morpheus fighting in a dojo, or Neo stopping a bunch of bullets being fired at him, or Neo flying off like Superman at the end of the film. One thing that I see a lot of people talking about is that the film attempts to relate Neo to Jesus from the Bible. Now, I heavily disagree with this, as there's really no similarities between the characters. Where Neo is a hacking master that knows Kung Fu, Jesus was more of a peaceful guy that didn't know Kung Fu. If the film wanted us to relate Neo to Jesus, then I'm sure one of the other characters in the movie would have said something along the lines of, whoa, he's like that hippie dude from the Bible. So in reality, I don't buy that theory. In the end, the 1999 film The Matrix is objectively the best film of all time, and if you don't agree with me, then just watch this video again. Mm. Subscribe.